Dead America, Tales of the First Month The Punk Band by Derek Slayton Day Zero, 7.38 p.m. Jackie sat behind the wheel of her beat-up tour van, painted black with Jackie and the Deathbringers spray-painted on the side in crude red. Her short purple mohawk scraped the roof of the vehicle as she swiveled her head around to look for the place. Ethan sat in the passenger seat, stealing glances at her. How about, instead of checking me out, you help me find the club? She snapped, rolling slowly down the streets of downtown Amarillo, which were mostly empty. While that was a normal occurrence, on this night it was legitimately alarming. I can do that, Ethan stammered. But I don't think it's going to matter much. Look at this place. It's a ghost town. Jackie scoffed. Ghost town or not... We're making a hundred bucks for the gig tonight, so we need to get there, she muttered. Harvey leaned his hulking, tattooed frame forward from the back. A hundred bucks? he exclaimed. That's it? Well, they said we could camp out on the stage, too, Jackie said. No super center parking lot for us tonight. Kevin let out a hacking cough from the far back where he lay sprawled out on the floor amongst all of their instruments. He'd been sick as a dog his already wafer-thin form looking sunken and sorrow. He tried to say something, but it came out garbled and raspy. What the hell did he just say? Jackie demanded. As his official interpreter, Harvey replied loudly, he said he's excited to be able to sleep someplace warm for a change. Yeah, well, just as long as he sleeps away from me, she muttered. He can suffer through the set with a cold. I'm not that fortunate. Ethan grinned. Can't have the star be sick, he drawled. Not a good look. She wrinkled a nose. So you think I'm only here for my looks? She snapped. His smile faltered, and he stammered, cheeks flushing. No, I mean, it's just... You're the singer, and, uh... It would be bad for your voice, and for the fans. Jackie cracked a sly smile, and Harvey reached up to smack Ethan on the shoulder. Smooth, man. Real smooth. Harvey quipped. That's a surefire way to get into her pants. What? Ethan cried, blushing even harder. That's not why I'm here. Harvey rolled his eyes. Who are you fooling, man? He drawled. We're a punk band, and you're in khakis and a polo shirt. You look like you should be sexually harassing a waitress at the country club instead of playing with us. I'm just comfortable like this, Ethan retorted, facing front. It's not like I wear this stuff on stage. I'm punk at heart. Bullshit, Harvey teased. If Jackie was a fat-ass bald dude named Jack, you wouldn't be within a hundred miles of us. Jackie rolled her eyes. Hey, you know any of the bass players that would ride in a van from Austin to Amarillo getting hot boxed by your stench? She cut in loudly. Well, Harvey trailed off, then shook his head. No. Then stop breaking his balls and be thankful he's here, she snapped. Because if he wasn't, we wouldn't have any gigs on this tour. She glanced over at Ethan and gave him a wink. She knew full well that he'd wanted to join them because of his crush on her. But it didn't bother her. She was happy to have a reliable bass player, even if it meant he stared at her ass during the entire show. Hey, Ethan said, sitting up straight and pointing. I think that's the spot over there. Jackie spotted a sign that boasted, The Dirty Dog, and nodded. Hell yeah, about time, she said. There was an open sign in the front window, but like everywhere else, it didn't look like there was anyone around. There wasn't even any movement in the windows. It didn't look like there was anyone inside either. We go on in two hours, Harvey cried, throwing up his hands. Where the hell is everybody? Relax, man. This kind of town nobody comes out early. Ethan assured him. First band doesn't even start for an hour anyway. People will show up. Harvey flopped back in his seat. Yeah, well, as long as we get paid, he muttered. Jackie pulled around to the back, parking the van aside the loading dock doors. There were no other vehicles in sight. Guess we're here first, she said, and spun the van around, backing up against the loading dock for ease of getting their stuff out. Harvey smacked Kevin's legs, prompting the drummer to sit up and start coughing up a storm. 
Oh, come on, buddy, Harvey said. Let's get a few shots in you. That'll get you going. Kevin's face was pale, his eyes bloodshot as if he hadn't slept in days. He let out another deep hack and then laid right back down, curling up onto his side. Just leave him be, Jackie suggested. We can get the gear unloaded and set up, and he can rest. He can be a sick, lazy fuck all he wants, as long as it's not between ten and eleven tonight. It's his own fault, Harvey accused. Told him he shouldn't have been doing those vodka shooters with those football fans in Austin. He'd been dragging ass ever since. Ethan shook his head. Not just him, man. Remember the opening act last night in Lubbock? He asked. They looked like death warmed over. Yeah, well, you'd be hung over every day too if you lived in Lubbock. Harvey quipped. Ethan paused and then nodded in agreement. Fair enough, he said. As the trio came out of the van, an older heavyset man strolled outside from the back door. You the opening act? he asked. Headliner, Jackie replied. Shit, the man growled. I've been calling those pricks for the last hour and nothing. If they don't show up, then you're playing two sets. Jackie stepped forward, staring him confidently in the eye. Guessing you're the club owner? she asked. Yep, I'm Mr. Howell, he replied, puffing out his chest. Well, Mr. Howell, she quipped, if you want us to play two sets, I hope you're prepared to pay us twice. He pulled a notepad from his back pocket and flicked through it to a page with a bunch of numbers on it. Can't give you two hundred, he said, shaking his head. I can do one twenty-five. One seventy-five, Jackie counted. He narrowed his eyes. One fifty. Take it or leave it, he snapped. One seventy-five and a mid-range bottle of whiskey. Jackie shot back, not wavering. You take it or leave it. Mr. Howell glared at her and then chuckled, shaking his head. Since you asked for a man's drink, I'll agree to it, he said, and held out his hand. She shook his greasy paw, keeping herself from wincing at how slimy he was. My sound guy, Alonzo, will take care of you, Mr. Howell said. I gotta go drop off dinner for my sick wife and kids. Ethan shook his head. Seems like a hell of a bug going around, he said. Mr. Howell nodded, clucking his tongue. Yeah, it's terrible, he said. They're going on day three of being sick. Anyway, if I'm not back in time for the first set, have at it. I'll let the bartender know to give you what you asked for. As he walked away, Jackie turned to the other two. Okay, you guys, start unloading, she instructed. I'll go meet with Alonzo. She headed inside without waiting for them to answer, wrinkling her nose at the sound of Kevin hacking it up even more in the back of the van. He'd better not get anything on my mic. She stepped inside the bar, spotting a few younger people having some drinks in the corner. A door guy leaned against the wall, glued to his phone, and the bartender was flipping through TV channels. A tall and muscular guy stood behind the soundboard, and Jackie approached him. You Alonzo? she asked. Yep, he replied, crossing his arms. You the band? She cocked a brow. Yep, she replied. I'm Jackie. She gave his clean-cut person a once-over. Everything good? he drawled. Yeah, sorry, she replied, shaking her head. You just don't strike me as much of a punk fan, that's all. Do I strike you as a fan of having money for dinner and a lap dance? he asked. She smirked. As long as you aren't expecting that lap dance from me, she quipped. He cracked a smile. I'll get the cables ready, he said. Let me know if you need a hand setting up. Before she could respond, Ethan burst inside frantically. Jackie, he cried. Something's wrong with Kevin. She sighed, rolling her eyes. Something more than usual, she joked. I'm serious, he exclaimed. She walked back towards the door, and he waved at her maniacally. Hurry up! he snapped. In all of their time together, Ethan had never raised his voice to Jackie, and the sound of it put her on edge. She rushed towards him, and he led her back outside. He just started convulsing, Ethan gushed, not responding to us. Oh shit, Jackie breathed and tore outside. Harvey held Kevin down in the back of the van as the latter's body flopped all over the place. What the hell, man? Jackie cried. I don't know, Harvey replied, eyes frantic. 
He just started freaking out. He hit his head, so I'm trying to keep him steady. A few moments of horrible thrashing later, Kevin fell silent, letting out a ragged death rattle. Harvey let go, standing up and backing away from the van, shaking his head. Is he? Ethan breathed. Jackie pressed her hands against her cheeks. He's not allowed to die until after the tour, she blurted, a poor attempt at lightening the situation in her shock. She finally pulled herself together and shook her head. We need an ambulance, now. Harvey, keep watch on him, Ethan instructed, and grabbed her hand, dragging her inside. She let him pull her along, though she gazed back at Kevin, and then saw his legs move. Harvey, look! she cried, digging in her heels and wrenching herself free of Ethan. Harvey turned around as Kevin sat up. Yo, man, you doing okay? he asked. Kevin looked around in a jerky manner, and then locked eyes on Harvey. But they didn't look like his regular eyes. He looked... dead. His stare was cold. Kev? Harvey asked shakily, the large man quivering at the sight of his friend. Kevin let out a screech and scrambled forward, leaping from the van and latching onto Harvey's neck with his teeth. He tore a strip of flesh from the large man, sending them both toppling to the ground. Harvey! Ethan cried, but didn't move. Jackie reacted immediately, rushing forward and grabbing the beat-up guitar that was sitting outside of the van, swinging it hard towards Kevin. She cracked him in the ribs, sending him flying off of Harvey, who struggled to stop the bleeding. Ethan, get Harvey, she barked. He finally found his feet and rushed over, grabbing Harvey's arm and dragging him towards the doors. As he did, Kevin got up and rushed Jackie, and she swung the guitar again, cracking him in the side of the head and sending him to the ground. He was barely affected by her onslaught, much to her shock, and he struggled to get back to his feet as she stood at the ready. His foot slipped on a wet piece of cardboard as she wound up for another swing. Get in here! Ethan screamed, and she took the extra couple of seconds from Kevin's slip to turn and bolt. Her vicious bandmate made it to his feet and pursued her, but she made it inside just in time, Ethan slamming it just as she cleared the threshold. Kevin slammed into the other side, pounding and banging on it as Jackie and Ethan caught their breath. Everyone in the bar stared at them and Jackie dropped the bloody guitar on the floor with a resonating thud. Bartender, we need an ambulance now, she barked. And door guy, get those doors locked. The bartender picked up the phone and started dialing immediately. The door guy, however, didn't move, still playing around with his phone. Jackie didn't notice, though, because she turned back to Harvey, who was on the floor bleeding profusely from his neck wound. Ethan took off his polo shirt, revealing his Jackie and the Deathbringers t-shirt underneath. He pressed the fabric against the wound as hard as he could. Hold that tight on there, buddy, he said softly. Hope is on the way. Jackie marched over to the bar, where the bartender was frantically trying to call an ambulance for the third time. He tossed the phone on the bar in frustration. Where the fuck is my ambulance, man? she snapped. I tried half a dozen times, he replied, shaking his head. Busy. If you have a phone, Jackie bellowed into the bar, start calling for an ambulance. The door guy ignored her, busily staring at his phone, but Alonzo and the young couple in the corner began dialing. Jackie tried as well, but it was busy. She glanced around and saw everyone else shaking their heads. She let out an angry scream, proving why she was the lead singer in a punk band. Ethan, we have to fight our way to the van so we can get Harvey to the hospital she said, turning back to him. I need you to... She stopped short as Ethan stood up, slowly shaking his head no. His hands and shirt were covered in blood. It began to hit her what that meant. But before she could react, Harvey shifted behind him just like Kevin had before he'd attacked. Ethan, look out! She yelled. He looked down, seeing the movement of the formerly deceased Harvey, and leapt away. Oh, hell no! He cried, darting away as everyone else in the bar looked on in terror. A moment later, Harvey got to his feet, head swinging around with his dead eyes searching. The couple screamed and took off for the front door, the bartender hot on their heels. 
The doorman was still oblivious to what was happening around him. Harvey spotted Ethan first, sprinting after him. Alonzo tore for the large dead man, lowering his shoulder and catching him in the side, sending him to the ground and buying Ethan a few moments. As the creature scrambled back to its feet, Jackie ran back over to the spot where she dropped the guitar, picking it up to arm herself. "'Hey, Harvey!' she barked. "'Over here!' The ghoul turned in her direction, letting out a growl before running towards her. When he got close, she sidestepped and swung low, taking out his legs and sending him tumbling to the ground. Before Harvey could get back up, Jackie moved around and brought the guitar down on his head several times, until it was nothing but goo and skull chunks on the floor. She tossed the guitar down with disgust at what she'd been forced to do to her friends today. "'Damn, girl!' Alonzo breathed from behind her. "'You did a number on him. Just make sure you stay on her good side,' Ethan added. "'Damn straight,' Alonzo agreed. Ethan reached out, gingerly putting his hand on her shoulder to turn her back towards him. "'You good?' he asked softly. After a moment of staring into nothingness, she finally snapped out of his, her eyes focusing on him. "'Yeah, yeah, I'm good,' she said shakily. We have to get the hell out of here. And go where? Ethan asked. A hotel? Jackie shook her head. Anywhere that isn't Amarillo, she replied. Alonzo held up his hands. Wait, wait, he said. You think there's more of these things out there? I have no clue, man, Jackie admitted. All I know is that I don't want to be anywhere near a lot of people right now. He nodded thoughtfully. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call, he agreed. Let me get my stuff and we'll get out of here. He ran off behind the bar to grab his stuff. Where are we going, though? Ethan asked. Jackie shook her head. I don't care, she replied. Let's go camping in the van for a few days and hope this stuff blows over. We're going to need supplies if we're going to do that, he said. Bet their back room here is stocked. She nodded and they ran off to the back room. There were several cases of alcohol, beer, and in the corner there was a case of bottled water. A stack of heavy canvas bags sat to the left with the local radio station logo on them, likely left over from some promotion. Get water and whatever food you can find, Jackie instructed. Ethan reached down and grabbed a large bottle of whiskey, holding it up in the air and wiggling it back and forth. And a few bottles of that, Jackie agreed, holding up a finger. Just make sure it's top shelf stuff, none of this well shit. I like where your head's at, Ethan agreed and tossed a few bottles of the high-end whiskey into his bag. The duo loaded up on water and large bags of pretzels and nuts. As they loaded the bags, Alonzo entered, his brow furrowing. So, you're all robbing us now? he drawled. We thought camping might be ideal, Jackie explained, so we're getting supplies. Alonzo nodded and picked up a bag for himself. Hell, I'm down with some camping, he said and shoved supplies into the bag. Once they were loaded with as much as they could carry, they walked back into the main bar area. Hold up, can't leave Chucky over there, Alonzo said, inclining his head towards the door guy that was still oblivious to everything going on. He ain't the brightest bulb, but he needs to know we're leaving. Just hurry, Jackie gushed, because we have to figure out a way to get past Kevin in the back, unless you have a car at the ready. Alonzo shook his head. Rode the bus today, because I planned on getting messed up at the strip club after my shift, he said. Really, though, it's a shame it's still early. Would be nice to swing by and rescue a few ladies before we head out of town, he cocked his head. Day shift is still there, but I don't want any of that. You saying day shift strippers aren't worth your time? Jackie asked, cocking a brow. You and your assumptions today, I swear, Alonzo replied, shaking his head. Nah, I'm saying my ex works day shift, and as much as I would love to see her get ripped apart by one of those things, I'm putting self-preservation ahead of that. Jackie had the grace to look regretful about her accusation. My bad, she admitted. You're getting me out of town, he replied, waving a hand. Be cool. He headed over to the door to talk to Chucky, as Jackie and Ethan went to the back door. She held out her bags to him, and he took them, but his eyebrows rose in confusion. What are you doing? he asked. Jackie picked up the broken neck of the guitar, which was busted in a jagged point, like a stake. 
I'm going to take care of Kevin, she said firmly, so I need you to hang on to the bags while I do. Here, let's swap, Ethan insisted, holding out the bags. I can take him out. Jackie cocked a brow. We both know I'm the one who should be doing the fighting here, she drawled. He paused, but then nodded in agreement. Remembering the show in Austin a few nights back where she jumped into the big and broke a guy's nose because he wouldn't leave a girl alone. You just make sure you do it safely, he said, worry in his tone. Jackie didn't respond with words, simply grinning and then grabbing his t-shirt and jerking him forward for a kiss. He couldn't do anything but stand there in shock, his hands full with the bags, but she easily did all the work and then pulled away once they were both breathless. He opened his mouth to say something, but no noise came out. You rode in a van to Lubbock and Amarillo just so you could be close to me, Jackie said with a smirk. Figured you deserve at least a kiss. He grinned, dazed, and then Alonzo approached from the front door. All right, we need to go, he said. Chucky is heading home. He was halfway across the room when a banging echoed at the front door. The bartender smacked the glass. Covered in blood from head to toe, that same dead-eyed look as Harvey and Kevin. But Chucky didn't notice. He barely glanced up from his phone, reaching over to push on the door. No! Alonzo bellowed. But it was too late. The door was open. The zombie bartender rushed in and latched onto Chucky's arm, biting down hard. The doorman dropped his phone, finally bringing his full attention to something other than his screen, and shoved the bartender away from him. The walking corpse staggered back through the door with such force that it knocked it clean off its hinges, and before Chucky could get away from it, several zombies tore through the opening and overwhelmed him. Alonzo ran towards Ethan and Jackie, the duo watching him tear towards them. "'I'll shut the door once he's through,' Ethan said, and Jackie nodded, waiting for Alonzo to get close to them. She threw her entire weight into the door thrusting it open with enough force to send undead Kevin stumbling backwards. Unfortunately, all of the noise from the door banging had attracted another creature wearing a tattered and bloodied business suit. Kevin fell to the ground, tripping over some garbage, which gave Jackie time to focus on the other creature. It had its eyes set on Ethan, who stood ready to slam the door shut as soon as Alonzo was clear. Jackie rushed over, the tip of the weapon at neck height, jamming it upwards into the monster's throat and up into its head. The ghoul convulsed as it fell to the ground, unmoving. Alonzo flew through the door and Ethan slammed it shut, throwing all of his weight against it to try to keep the zombies inside at bay. They banged from the inside, and he screamed as he held the door shut. Alonzo ran for the van just as Kevin managed to work his way from the garbage and run towards him. He turned his back to the creature and held up his canvas bags to protect him. Kevin bit into one of the bags, a resounding crack as his teeth hit glass. Jackie grabbed Kevin by the back of the shirt and threw him to the ground, putting her foot to his throat. Drumstick! she screamed. Alonzo tossed his bags into the back of the van and snatched up a stick, handing it over. Jackie brought the stick down hard, jamming it straight into Kevin's eye. The lucky shot was a killing blow, ending her friend's short afterlife. Get the van started, Ethan huffed from behind them. I'm going to have to make a run for it. These doors aren't going to stay closed for very long once I move. Jackie nodded and glanced at Alonzo. I'll get the van going. You get those bags off of him so he can run, she instructed. You make sure he gets in this van, you understand me? I got you covered, Alonzo promised. You just be ready to floor it. She nodded and jumped into the driver's seat. Alonzo grabbed the bags from Ethan and tossed them in the back, clambering up behind them. I'm going on three, Ethan said. Just get your ass over here and we're gone, Alonzo said. The van roared to life and Ethan took a deep breath. One, two, three, he cried and leapt from the door, sprinting hard. Sure enough, the door slammed open a second later. He ran as hard as he could, fortunate that the zombies stumbled all over each other in their pursuit. He dove towards the back of the van, landing on his stomach with a thud. Alonzo grabbed his belt and jerked him fully inside. Go, go, go! he yelled, 
and Jackie floored it just before the zombies got a hold of Ethan's kicking feet. She sped from the alleyway and to the next intersection, stopping so they could secure the door. Where the hell am I going? Jackie asked as the guys scrambled through all of the instruments to get to the front of the vehicle. Hang a left here, Alonzo instructed. We're going to go up a few miles and pick up Highway 87. That'll take us out of here and get us up near Dalhart. We need to stay away from people, Jackie countered. He nodded vehemently. Don't worry, this place is forty miles away from anything remotely close to civilization, he explained. We pick us a spot, hang tight, and if we run low on supplies, we have a place to head towards. I can work with that, Jackie replied, and made the turn to head out of the city. There were sporadic signs of distress around, small packs of those things running around a couple of wrecked cars. Whatever this is, I'm glad we're not going to be anywhere near it, she said. She hit the gas once they hit the edge of civilization, and the guys looked out the back window. Zombies tore around the streets, and a fire had popped up on the east side of town. Alonzo looked down at the bags and noticed the radio station logo. He leaned forward and turned on the radio, tuning it to the station from the bag. A cheesy seventies disco song blared, and he turned it down a bit. Well, if ever there was going to be a soundtrack to the apocalypse, disco would be it, Jackie drawled. With any luck, someone will break in with some news soon, Alonzo pointed out. The station is pretty strong, so we'll have it for a while. The group sat quietly, listening to the happy, upbeat nature of the disco song pumping through the speakers. Jackie couldn't help but feel like it was a fate worse than what had befallen her friends, shuddering. On the heel of that thought, however, was the images of Harvey and Kevin, lifeless and bloody on the ground. What was supposed to be gig night had instead been defending herself against her zombified band. Something had gone horribly wrong with the world, and all they could do was hope that it was manageable by people much more capable than some punks in a van. The End